the Brexit bill. A hundred billion pounds hit to the UK's exports as toys, medical kit and jewellery sales slump. I'm going to read into this more from the independent, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Lee here with an article from The Independent with the headline of the Brexit bill. £100 billion hit to the UK exports. Those toys, medical kits and jewellery sales slump. Businesses that make sporting goods, children's toys, jewellery and medical goods have struggled for the most with the border costs imposed by the UK's decision to leave the EU. So guys... If you can, hit the like button and share across social media so others are notified of this video. Now you're probably thinking, oh, another Brexit video, another Brexit fall. Like, how many more of these do we have to hear about? And you're probably thinking, oh, like, another Ramona who's not providing any evidence whatsoever and just spewing out hatred. You know, that's probably what you're thinking. But, you know, it's funny, you know, how so many... So many stories about Brexit just won't go away. And it's almost as if, you know, things are really, really bad out there right now. You know, it's it's really, really, really getting it's becoming a, a struggle out there, you know. And you, you're just thinking to yourself, you know, how many more headlines do people need to put in front of them, you know, for for, you know, these things to just kind of hit, 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 hit home, you know, because even even now, you know, some people just don't seem to want to to get it you know it's just like you just don't want to uh, believe in these in these issues whatsoever you know it's it's almost like you know it's just not true it just cannot be true that things are going to be worse off for us I'm going to put a link into all in the description to all those articles guys if you want to look at them yourselves some of them I've already covered and why did I bring them all up the reason I brought up them to remind ourselves is the, the countless and continuous damage that Brexit is causing for everyone. They really are. They're causing damage to everyone. And the more we, ha we, have, to, we have to, not just myself, but others, have to continue to hammer home this message. And we have to keep hammering it until politicians start standing up and saying, hey, we need to do something about Brexit, instead of just ignoring the big fat white elephant in the room all the goddamn time that has been ignored for the past four years, and now that things are going to get even more worse with import checks to come, with more work to come in in April, as we go through these stages of now, of controls coming in and out of Dover and other places connected to the EU, the headache is not going away. Businesses are suffering as a result of Brexit as well. Job losses have uh, suffered as a result of Brexit. NHS workers have suffered as a result of Brexit. The list of list of things affected by Brexit, it can go on and on and on. And yes, there are some other factors that have taken place which has, has damaged our economy. Liz Truss being Prime Minister is a prime example with her kamikaze budget. Or the war in Ukraine, which is having a global effect on everyone, including ourselves. Yes, there's no denying that. The COVID-19 pandemic is one that many economies out there have, to a larger extent, recovered to a certain well. But we still haven't. We're still in this cost of living crisis. And as far as I'm aware, I'm not hearing the term cost of living crisis in any other country, in every other major European or American, America, for exactly. I'm not hearing a cost of living crisis there. Seems to be only coming along here, guys. <coughs> and this is the thing. Just this headline here, you know, toys, medical kits and jewellery sales. So these are, you know, for just speaking on toys and jewellery sales, right? They're non-essential items, but they are still businesses, businesses that need to make money. Now, toys are vital because of, for, for children, you know, you want, you want to keep them happy and you want them... More, you want them to have toys to give them happiness and whatnot. But they are becoming more expensive as a result of Brexit. Jewelry sales, people, it's not something that uh, is, an, is an essential, but people like to have them, people want them. And if they're going to cost more, it means it's going to be even harder for people to buy them. Medical kits, you know, people want to have some people, most people in most of their homes who are earning a decent income will probably have a first aid or something kit in your house because God forbid if something was to happen. And 
I wouldn't be surprised if you're someone listening to this and if I'm going to say to you now, if you can afford a medical kit or a first aid kit to have in your house, have one because it can actually might be a big it might actually be a lifesaver um, because especially yeah with how long it takes for an ambulance to come and respond to a, to a 999 call um, <clears throat> and these things are all racking up in money and people who have been on medium and low medium incomes are now falling into the lower income categories because most of the majority of their money is going towards bills and then those are on the lower incomes now ending up in poverty because they can't afford to pay their bills so they end up and up likely out on their street out on the street or stuck in their parents or family related home because they cannot afford to buy their own home yeah you see the pattern that is coming here so <clears throat> what is my point my point is is that all these things are because of brexit and we have to address this issue it's not going away. We need to address this issue. Now, of course, we can't rejoin the EU straight off the bat. We have to be realistic. We're talking potentially maybe 10, 20 years time, maybe even longer than that before we, before we can have a serious discussion about joining the EU. I'm not going to use the term rejoining because I don't think that's the right term to use now. Um, <clears throat> we can't just undo it at a flick of a switch now. Um, we have too many politicians who have messed up our system. We need an overwhelming majority of politicians on the side of the public in agreement that we want to join it, the European Union. Um, and that, that's, that's something that is going to need to come down the line. But I've shared my thoughts on that. So £100 billion to hit the exports. Guess who's going to foot the bill, guys? Yes, we are. So let's read into this, guys. So Brexit is leaving a hole of almost £100 billion in annual reports exports, making Britain's economy worse off if it had remained in the European Union, new analysis had claimed. Businesses that make an array of products, including sporting goods, children's toys, jewellery and medical equipment, have struggled the most with border costs imposed by the UK's decision to leave the EU leading to a 30% less trade between 2030 and 2033 than if had Britain stayed in the trading bloc. Since leaving the single market, Britain's export growth has been sluggish behind other advanced economics, leading to missing growth in goods and service exports to around 23 billion quarterly, the analysis revealed. Just think of that. Service exports around 23 billion quarterly. Uh, and I suppose some people are probably going to say in the comments, well, it just means you can get, why don't you just get some cheap toys from China? Well, I'm sure we are getting some toys from China, but we also like to do business with our European partners across the sea as well. They just cost a lot more and they take a lot more time. And guess what the companies are going to do when, they, when those things play a factor into their companies? They're going to pass it on to the consumer. But if the consumer doesn't buy these things, then the companies has to doubt, have to make tough decisions, whether it means cutting people, letting people go, that means somebody out of a job, or if it means that the, the, the company downsizes as well. It's, just a, it's a ripple effect that's never ending at the moment with Brexit. Since leaving the single market, Britain's export growth has been sluggish behind other advances in economies. Johnson, I'm going mad, sorry today. John Springford, an associate fellow at the Centre of Europe for European Reform, CER, a pro-EU think tank, says his analysis shows that Brexit is leading to permanent depression to trade between the UK and the EU. Permanent depression, that's not good. If Brexit hadn't happened, we can visit the universe where Remain won the referendum and then trade and the economy would be significantly higher, he said. Mr Springfield dismissed arguments from Brexiteers that further trade deals with countries outside the EU could make up the economic shortfall. The argument violates one of the few absolute certainties that we have in the international economics, which is the trade with nearby large economies that is always going to be much bigger than trade with distant smaller economies, he said. Economics Thomas Sampson, an associate professor at the London School of Economics, the LSC, said Brexit had been a drag on the economy and described Mr Springfield as a respected analyst. Mr. Sampson said that while there was a nuisance in how you to interpret the numbers, you cannot question the quality of his work. 
excuse me, the gloomy data supports arguments from other economics that leaving the EU has damaged the UK's financial help and not freed up the 350 million a week for the NHS that Boris and the Leave campaign promised. Now, the argument that people have made about the 350 million pounds a week, uh, as he most recently was was brought up, actually, believe it or not, on Question Time, BBC Question Time, they are claiming that it's already been invested in the NHS. Well, if it's invested in the NHS, if they're getting 350 million pounds, where's the service? Oh, that's right. Hmm. Yeah. I'll tell you where some of that money is going if you really want to know. You don't really want to, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Some of that is actually going into private health care. It's not actually going into the NHS. It gets funneled through the NHS. But it doesn't stay there. It goes into private health care, believe it or not. Yeah, it's actually true. However, most pessimistic predictions that Brexit will spark economic Armageddon and leave Britain struggling for their food supply will have not come to pass. With another wave of post-Brexit red tape coming into force, the Independent can take a closer look at Brexit's biggest economic consequences of just how detrimental it is proving to be. Conservative ministers, whether leave or remain backers, have largely refused to accept that Brexit has damaged Britain's economy. But we have had a series of consistent independent estimates from experts on the big hits to economy growth from quitting the EU. But Michael Goh said, I think we've had enough of listening to these experts. How's that going for, for us, Mr. Goh? Yeah, you know, not listening to experts, you know, you know, if you if you if you need to change your car tire, you're going to want to speak to a mechanic, you know, when it comes to that. That's, a, that's an expert on how to change a tire. You know, for example, you're not going to ask a doctor to do that for you. You know, if your house is burning down, you're not going to call the ambulance service and tell them to, to, to save your loved ones in there. You're going to call the fire brigade because they're the experts on it. Just highlighting how important experts are, guys. Most recent studies is the bleakest economics at Cambridge economic megters can't say that word last month found that brexit had already cost the uk economy 140 billion in lost growth that would have if the uk opted to remain in the customs union and single market why did we not take the vote take the option that theresa may's deals had when we had the chance question mark question mark question mark Looking at the growth through the prisms of gross value added GVA, the overall value of goods and services, they also estimate that it would leave the UK £311 billion worse off by 2035. According to analysis carried out last year by experts at Bloomberg Economics, Brexit is costing the UK economy £100 billion a year. The group estimates that gross domestic product GDP is 4% smaller than it might have been. Mr. Sampson said that Brexit is costing the UK between 75 billion and 125 billion each year, the equivalent of 3% to 5% of GDP. It's pretty clear the UK's growth slowed after the referendum, he told the Independent. Brexit has been a slow and accumulating drag on the economy. The economics added COVID and the Ukraine war have made assessing the impact harder. But if you look at the studies comparing the UK and other economics, there is an ongoing impact. The gap between where our growth is and what could have been has been gradually grown over time. Basically, the Ukraine war and COVID, for those who it's been used as a smokescreen to cover the damage that Brexit has done. But it's still here and it's still causing damage. But people still think that, that oh no, it's because of the war. Oh, it's, still, it's because of what happened in the pandemic, which is, was... I don't know, three plus years ago, you know, that apparently that's the reason. <clears throat> Brexit has proved damaging to already sluggish levels of international investment in, in Brexit, says experts. A 2022 study by the Centre for European Reform, the CER, found that Brexit had cost the UK €33 billion in lost investment, trade and tax revenue. I can just see somebody in the comments saying, well, they're part of the Europeans, so you can't trust them. Right, and I'm going to believe you. Jacob61225 in the comment section down below. Yeah, I thought so. I think tank town that 13.7% hit to investment when comparing the UK to a doubleganger group of similar economics across just one financial quarter. 
The recent Cambridge Economic Studies estimates that Britain will have a 32% lower investment by the middle of the next decade than without Brexit. Brexit has been hitting jobs and wages, says economists. The Cambridge Economics Study said Brexit Britain would have 3 million fewer jobs by 2035 than if it had stayed inside the EU. A damning 2022 report from the Resolution Foundation think tank and LSE found that the average workers' pay was set to be £470 lower each year if Britain had stayed inside the EU. Just imagine that, an extra £470 in your pocket if we had stayed within the EU. <coughs> Let's let that sink in for a moment. They said the process would dampen pay for the rest of the decade, making the country poorer during the 2020s. One of the most obvious impacts of Brexit has been the extra cost and hassle for UK businesses trying to export goods to the EU and new controls on imports from the continent coming further waves in April and October are expected to make matters worse. Post-Brexit checks and expensive paperwork were added to repeated disruptions at the port of Dover. By the way, as a reminder, this was not on the ballot. People did not vote for this at Dover. They did not vote for this for more paperwork for tougher, tougher trade. Nobody voted to make it harder for themselves. This was not on the ballot. This is not what the Leave campaign told us. <coughs> we have to remind ourselves, we did not vote for this. I don't remember us voting for this, but, <coughs> but you know, people are still going to say, um, well, what kind of Brexit did you want? I didn't want any Brexit at all at this point. While last year saw some supermarkets impose rationing on certain fruits and vegetable products to deal with the shortages. See, all this could be avoided. The CER study comparing Brexit Britain with double gang economics found that overall trading goods was 7% lower as a result of the nation's EU exit. It tallies broadly with the 2022 Resolution Foundation study, which pointed to an 8% slump in the UK's trade openness, trade as a share of economic output since Brexit. Brexiteer Business Secretary Kemi Baganoff said last week that Brexit was going well and that the government was working through the problems. Of course, Brexit is definitely going well, guys. It's going really, really well. Yeah, definitely going well there. Definitely going well. Mr. Baganoff pointed to the fact that figures show British exports to the EU increased in 2020. Two. However, this only marks an upturn following a post-Brexit slump in 2020 and 2021. Professor John Ports, a senior fellow at the King's College London's UK in a changing European initiative, told The Independent that Brexit had come at a significant cost to the economy, but not a cataclysmic one. So we, we haven't had a cataclysmic uh, economy, but we're certainly close to it. Do you guys remember when we had empty shelves on the supermarket? <clears throat> that would never have happened as well if it wasn't for Brexit. Just remember that as well. You notice that we don't have some of the things on your supermarket shelves that you didn't have as well. Is it me or do we have less choices as well? It does feel like that whenever I go into a supermarket. Do you notice that since before 2016? The top economics said it was unclear whether British firms would successfully recover from the red tape burden over time. Brexit will be a drag, continuing drag on the economy. He said businesses may adjust to extra costs, but on the other hand, we may be increasing cut out at some of the supply chain. Food price rises! Yeah, because this is definitely what we voted for, isn't it? We definitely voted for food pri price rises. There is evidence that all the Brexit red tape has pushed up food prices. British households have paid almost seven billion to cover the cost of the added bureaucracy, according to the 2023 LSE study. The LSE Centre for Economic Performance said that leaving the single market and customs union had pushed up the average household food bill by 250 pounds since Brexit. They calculated that food inflation had rocketed by 25 percent since 2019, and they would have only been have been 17 percent if Britain had stayed in the EU. Economics believe that the energy shock which followed the UK's invasion has had a bigger impact than Brexit, but the UK's exit has nonetheless had an impact on prices at the supermarket. The Bank of Economics of uh, Chiefs Economics, Hugh Phil, said that in 2022 that Brexit was one of the factors for the UK's highest levels of inflation. It helps explain why Paul Johnson, head of respective Institute for Physical Studies, the IFS think tank, another think tank, yeah, guys, said in the same year that Brexit was very clearly an economic 
goal. There's a lot of people saying this is not going well. And it's why the food sector groups have called on the government to agree a new veterinary deal with the deal with the EU to align health and safety standards in a bid to ease some of the paperwork burden. Professor Paul said polling showed that a majority of Britons were convinced that Brexit has not improved the economy, but they were also resigned to it. There are strong consensus among voters that, Brit that Brexit has not worked out well, but it's also the case that most do not want to reopen the whole thing, he said. No, um, I, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just this, uh, you know, peep. I think there is a, a regret coming on, you know, they're just, I'm just getting that feeling, you know, that there might be uh, a regret coming on somewhere, guys. Maybe, maybe it's just me, maybe it's just me. Matt Leash, Director of Public Policy and Communications at the Institute of Economic Affairs, a free market think tank, it's another one, guys. Maintained that despite some disruptions, Brexit is still a fantastic opportunity for the UK. Ah, the Institute of Economic Affairs, the IEA. This is the same I is this the same IEA buys that we don't actually know who funds them? Because, you know, their their people are allowed, you know, on you know, news outlets and stuff, and they're allowed to, to, to put their people on board and freely speak their mind and it's just if only we knew who funds them. Hmm, well, who could possibly fund these people? Brexit were only ever able, he said that Brexit were only ever able to be judged in the longer term, whether or not the UK takes advantage of those opportunities. What opportunities did we not have been in the EU that we now have been outside the EU? Details, please. Please, please explain the details. There is undoubtedly some disruption that comes from leaving the EU, but I think some of that has been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> yes, it's been um, greatly exaggerated. You know, definitely, um, definitely greatly exaggerated. Yeah, definitely exaggerated. Mr. Leach added that the cost of Brexit has always been exaggerated, and that's what will make Britain leaving the EU a success. Will depend upon the UK improving trade relations with other parts of the world. By the way, we could have traded with other parts of the world within the EU. Just saying. And the second aspect with Mr. Lee said the government hasn't taken much advantage so far is to have regulatory divergence that the EU in specific areas could be an advantage to the UK's economy. Can you please explain details again? Where's the details in this? Like <clears throat> they're saying all this stuff, but you know, where is the detail? Can, can you explain in detail for me how this benefits us? I'm still waiting for the detail. Here we go, guys. The Department of Business and Trade pointed to the successes in the Brexit fourth anniversary paper as evidence that the government was succeeding in delivering promises attracted to Britain's exit from the EU. <sighs> Such as... Question mark, question mark, question mark. Ms. Bagnot said, The statistics and success contained within the page for the Brexit fourth anniversary tell a powerful story of a global Britain which is thriving on the world stage. When we left the EU European Union, there were many forecasts of inevitable decline. These have been proved false. <laughs> we have... We are one of the lowest growing economies within the G7. You do know that as well. My department is leaguing in our post-Brexit freedoms to make the UK the best known place in the world to, to start and grow a business. Yeah, not many people are doing that. I wonder why. And we're knocking down the barriers to trade. Knocking down the barriers to trade. Didn't, oh, excuse me, haven't we put, put barriers up in front of our neighbours? Roughly removing 500 to date. In 2023, this was the equivalent to removing around 1 million of trade barriers every single hour. The British people's convictions that the UK would ex excel as masters of their own fate has paid dividends. My mission is that of my department is now build on these achievements to loudly and proudly champion free markets, free trade, free enterprise as the, surely, as the surest path to economic prosperity. Okay... I mean, I'm just, just going out on a limb here, guys. I'm just going to say I'm still not seeing that. Still not seeing that. Maybe I'm maybe I'm the one hallucinating here, but, you know, it's not like I've highlighted 
many examples and many articles stating about the disaster that Brexit is. But you know, you, you you're going to claim they're all false, obviously, in that. You know, uh, Johnny six one five six seven seven in the comments actually is going to tell you that Brexit is a success and that everyone else is lying. But I know the truth, right? <sighs> Just to put my serious hat on them in terms of final thoughts, guys. You know, more on the non-essential things such as toys, jewelry kits, and sales slumps. You know, we st set essentials are still necessity when it comes to food and food stuff, of course. And certain things that we need to have in our daily lives, but things like toys, medical uh, toys, jewelry, and medical kits probably not uh, um, are not as high on the agenda as things that people want to have. But it, but by not having these things, it means not buying these things because we have less money in our pockets, which means that these businesses, these sectors, are going to suffer as a result of them. It means that they're going to have to either find alternative ways. Of getting of getting different toys, of an alternative way of getting them into the country, cheaper ways to doing it, or they're going to have to cut back on them and find new markets. And it's easy for people to say that, but this is costing businesses money, and which in turn, which will mean that two things, as always, either people lose their jobs, or they look somewhere else where it costs less, you know, and it's just, or they go out of business. They can even go out completely out of business. And there are some businesses that have shut up. There's actually a shop. There's a shop not too far away from where I live. They were a household shop. They've been a local household shop for nearly 50 years. And they closed up for the first time. Not because of the pandemic. Not because of the war in Ukraine. But because of the issues of getting certain supplies in from the EU and it costed them and also their rents and everything were because it's all tied in it costed them more and more and eventually they've had to give up so guys what do you think what do you make of all of this this Brexit bill, £100 billion to hit the UK exports as toys, medical kits and jewellery sales slump. Let me know what you guys honestly think in the comment section down below. I've gone much longer than anticipated, but I wanted to really get this off my chest. But if you found my thoughts and you found this article interesting, please hit the like button. We greatly appreciate it. Share this across social media and hit that bell notification icon so you'll be notified of when I upload another video. And if you want to financially support me in the work I do here, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member for as little as 99p or joining me on Patreon for exclusive content. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I hope to catch you all very, very soon.